All right, so where I last left off, I was attaching the vertical stabilizer skin to the skeleton. Uh, I had made it to the point shown here where I had riveted the skin to the nose ribs and was about to start attaching it to the front spar. So that's what I'm going to show in this video. Uh, I actually did this on the same day or the evening of the same day that I uh, riveted to the nose ribs, but uh, that video was just getting too long, so I decided I would split it up. Uh, plus, the uh, camera battery died on me while I was doing, uh, right after I got started on this part. So uh, even though I missed the first, uh, the first part, uh, I still got plenty of decent footage. And uh, so that's what I'm going to show here. So for the lower part of this, I've talked about this in earlier videos, but in the lower, for the lower part, you remove the bottom inspar rib and reach your arm up in there. Uh, for the upper half of it, you remove Clecos and lift the skin just enough to get your arm up under there. Uh, and you do it one side at a time so that uh, the other side you know, holds, the, holds the form of the structure while you're working. So I'll get started. All right, so I'm still at it. Um, camera battery died, but I actually did go ahead. Let me see if I can tip it up. Went ahead and I did rivet it along this front spar here. That actually went very smoothly. Um, reaching in there was no problem. It's a bigger, a bigger cavity here than there was up here. Um, I hope it is as easy to get to this guy. Uh, I'm not looking forward to this because that's one where I have to bend the skin way up, but uh, I figured, and I may save that for another day, but I figured I'd try and do this, whatever it is, 18 or so rivets um, on the other side here while I have some battery. Now this position feels a little more awkward for me. Um, I'm actually... I thought the opposite side was going to be more awkward, but this might be. Uh, well, we'll see. Uh, so what I did, because the plans didn't say uh, to do it any other way, I figured I'll just kind of go every other, well, not every other one. What I did is I started in the middle, and then I kind of, you know, cut that distance in half each way, and then that in half, and it, once I got every other one, I just did all the rest. So. I'll do something similar here. Um, so here we go. So what I'm doing there, uh, I put a little piece of tape on the top of that Clico to remind myself that that's a different rivet length. Uh, that's a dash four instead of a dash 3.5 because uh, that rivet right there at the intersection of uh, you know those two lines, uh, that's where you go through the skin. Uh, the spar flange and a flange on that middle end spar rib. So it does need to be a slightly longer rivet and I didn't want to, you know, forget and get carried away. Um, I, I, I haven't really gotten to the point yet where I have a good feel for how, you know, how much bucking it takes uh, to get just the right shop head uh, on the first try yet. I think I'm getting a little better at it. I did have to drill one out uh, at, on this because I, I flattened it too far. What I tend to do uh, is, and I was probably being a little picky, uh, but what I tend to do is, you know, underdo it and then look up in there and then, you know, go a little further. Uh, that's obviously the safe thing. And then the other thing, you know, I would, I would do several rivets and then I'd look up under there and reach up under with the little gauge and, and check them all and, you know, see if any of them needed a little bit you know, a little bit more uh, flattening. But, you know, it went smoothly and quickly uh, other than that. All right, so uh, I've done these. I did the other side. So basically, it's symmetrical. <laughs> So now it's time to try and do these, and for that I have to remove all these Clecos that I've already removed, except a hand, you know, I've got a few in here, so that I can reach up under here and get to them with the bucking bar. So that's the next step. Uh, I hope I'm not trying to do too much in one day here, because this has been a long day. And 
I'm getting pretty tired, but I'd like to press on, see what I can do. Now, I definitely, you know, you get all these Clicos out and the whole thing kind of goes kathunk. You know, this rib's missing, this rib is no longer attached to the skeleton, and, you know, it, it's sitting, I guess it's okay the way it's sitting on boxes, but, you know, this is, the spar was able to sort of turn out a little bit, um, this rear spar. Should be okay, it's really important just that this is solid, right? Um, the other side basically has a rivet or a Clico in every possible hole. The, the plans tell you only do one side at a time. Uh, I took that to mean it was okay to you know do one side and then one side and then same thing here. I didn't have to go all the way down. Uh, but yeah, one side at a time, only on Clico one side at a time because the other side is what's holding you know the shape, which is fine. It's strong in this direction. Uh, but yeah, basically on the other side, I, I went ahead and put Clicos in every single hole, you know, that is the underside of this, uh, as well as this, obviously. So it should, I think it's going to be pretty easy to just reach up under here. I mean, I can feel pretty much everything. Uh, so I'm just going to do this. They're all 3-3.5s. Uh, this was the dash four because it's capturing three pieces of metal but all of this is just skin to spar um, there's no top rib here that's just the top of the spar so 18 rivets 3-3.5s I'm gonna start in the middle divide it up and I'll just keep cutting everything in half uh, like I did the other that seemed to work okay so that's what I'm gonna do just sort of pick one here. All right, enough talk. Let's get going. Uh, so one of the things I meant to mention, and uh, I'm not sure if you see me do it in this segment, uh, but there's been a couple of times where uh, you might see me take out a perfectly good Clico and replace it with another Clico in the same spot instead of just, you know, removing it to put in a rivet. And the reason I'm doing that is I've got two different brands of Clicos. Uh, I've got Wedge Locks and Quick Locks. I got both from both of them from Cleveland Aircraft Tool. Uh, the Wedge Locks are a little more expensive, and they're actually the ones that uh, Cleveland normally sells and that they recommend. But a couple of months ago, when I was buying more Clicos, uh, they were out of the Wedge Locks, and they offered me, you know, I could either wait for them to come back in on back order, or I could go ahead and I could get some quick locks uh, at a reduced price. And I basically, you know, they said they're not, well, they didn't say they're not as good. They just said they prefer the wedge locks. Uh, what I found when I was experimenting uh, and practicing was that the wedge locks hold better in a, uh, they seem to hold better in a hole that has been uh, dimpled. So the quick locks seem to have a little bit sharper of a, of a point on them, for lack of a better term. And then they're, the little grippy uh, part, uh, the little part that sort of cams out, is maybe not, not quite as big. So I had some of them fly out, uh, you know, when I was riveting a rivet next to one of those Clicos when I was practicing on things. Now, it may have just been because the practice piece wasn't as supported. Um, but I found that the quick locks go into a hole that hasn't been match drilled yet better because they are finer. Uh, but the wedge locks hold better, especially in a dimpled hole when you're riveting. So other people's mileage may vary. That's just what I've found. So if you see me moving Clicos around in a weird way, it's because I'm putting a wedge lock where a quick lock used to be when I'm about to rivet in a hole nearby. So as you can probably see, uh, this part went really smoothly. Um, you know, I was a little worried about the whole bit about lifting the skin up and how much room I was going to have to fit my arm up under there and everything. I, I actually think that was the easiest part. Um, you know, I, I didn't really worry, wasn't really worried I was going to crease the skin once I started doing it. And you're reaching straight in, so you're not even at a funny angle or anything. So um, 
yeah, this, this went great. I'm not going to show the other side because it's just more of the same. So I think I'm just going to let the real-time version of me wrap up. All right, so I finished, um, finished this side as well. So that's the whole front spar, both sides. Done. Riveted together. So um, that takes me through step five. So 6-6, six six, step 5. <clears throat> it's been a long day so far. I'm debating whether to keep going and making good progress, but I am getting pretty tired. Um, starting to get a better feel for, you know, how, how hard to buck um, or how, how long to hold the gun, of the, hold the trigger of the gun. I must be getting tired. I can't talk straight. Anyway. So next step is this guy and the top spar. This obviously has to be done with the uh, rivet gun and the bucking bar. So go ahead and do that. i to reach in. Obviously, that's a pretty long way to reach in. My back's getting pretty sore from working at this angle. I need to come up with something better than this. Um, but anyway, and then that the top rib I can you know I can do with the squeezer that. These are both step six. There's no reason I can't do the top rib now and save the squeezer for another, or save the middle inspar rib for another day. Um, yeah, based on based on how tired I am, I probably better do that. Or well, I may save everything for another day. Um, it's a good stopping place. So anyway. Uh, Good day. It was a good day. Uh, it was a long day. Remember this video was a continuation uh, of the one before so I'd been working for you know six or eight hours at least uh, straight on that day and uh, that's a long time to be working on something you know sort of hunched over it. A um, couple of comments on these pictures you can see where the bucking bar scraped the inside of the spar uh, just kind of scraped the primer. Um, it's worse on one side than the other, I think, because at that angle, it was the corner of the bucking bar that was up against the spar, but uh, it doesn't hurt anything. I could touch it up if I wanted to, but it's cosmetic and it's on the inside of the plane, so no big deal. i um, really happy with the results and looking forward to uh, finishing the vertical stabilizer, which I should be able to do in one more day.